Let's continue this conversation about Shohei Otani. Seems like Ooh. every time we open the show with Shohei, but he is the show. And today, some good news for Angels fans. He avoided arbitration, signed a one-year $30 million contract for the 2023 season. Yes, he was under contract for the Angels for one more year yeah. already. But, Gooby, you've gone through that arbitration process. It can be nasty. What does this mean for the Angels to get this done early? Well, guys, I think it's a couple things, too. It's, it's a great thing for Angels fans, and it's also great for baseball because the minute that it was put out there by the Angels PR, everyone around baseball said, Shohei Otani is now signed for the 2023 season. And when you go through that process, it's not fun. You're sitting at a desk, and the, the team Team, the Angels will be saying some negative things about you, and you're listening at your in your you know your agent saying the positive things. These go back and forth because an arbitrator is going to make that decision on what you're going to make next year. I think it was a great decision by the Angels to get this thing done, along with Shohei Otani's camp to get this thing done as quick as possible so they can move forward and put together a better and more deeper roster for 2023. Well, I think in what you're alluding to there is the team friendly aspect of yep. this deal. Absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, this is something that with the with the, the team up for sale. Uh, it might not be an offseason like we're used to seeing where, you know, you're going to go out there and sign the big free agents. So you might be stuck with a number that you've been dealing with. And to have a, a player like Otani um, signed to this kind of a deal, I think it really opens up or it gives you a better game plan of what you can go after early in the game rather than, you know, wondering about it late into the, you know, Christmas time or whatever. Yeah, it gives you that flexibility in the yeah. payroll, regardless of what happens as far as, you know, the ownership situation with the Angels. It gives you that flexibility where you want to get deeper, you want that depth in your roster next year. Biggest number handed out to a player who is arbitration eligible. The uh, last player who had the highest one-year deal was Mookie Betts at $27 million back in 2020. And, and you mentioned, both of you mentioned team-friendly, considering what we're seeing this year, a year like any other he is basically you know putting his AL MVP season last year behind him and he has taken a few t steps forward Gooby so when you look at what he's been able to do and this is something too it, it would take place usually in January right yep. I mean this is relatively early to yes. get this done right? yeah when you, when you especially when you're exchanging numbers your camp and then of course the Angels camp would be exchanging numbers so it's a process where sometimes it even drags into spring training we've seen that a couple times this season obviously with the lockout it was a little bit longer than normal but it can stretch it out and and there's a lot of negativity when you go through that process so getting this done when you think about where he was the last few seasons as well on the payroll to be able to get that kind of a jump in his salary but you, you talk about Mookie Betts and so when you look at Shohei Otani his numbers are like Mookie Betts swing in the bat, yeah. but he also has the, yeah. the, the pitching numbers like Justin Verlander or Jacob DeGrom. So you put both of those together and that's why you see that Tim, arbitration number. Can we read into this a little bit too and say, you know what, team friendly deal, getting it done early. Maybe Shohei's liking what he sees right now and wh where this Angel Ball Club's going. Well, I mean, he was going to be here regardless one way or the other. I mean, to me, there's the other side of that I look at is, you know, if we get into next year, you hope this doesn't happen, but maybe they, they, they go with a trade or move them. You know, to me, that number <clears> right there, that's that's a, not only team friendly for the Angels, it looks really good for another team going to pick him up. So um, I, it, a, lot, a lot of ways you can look at this, but I mean, he was going to be with the Angels one way or the other. It definitely allows both parties to go into the winter prepared, no animosity. You didn't have to go to the table, like you said. You're going to have Shohei with a normal offseason going into spring training, excited about playing his potentially maybe his last year with the Angels with, you know, no, no feelings hurt, I guess, because you had to go through an arbitration process. Five games left in the regular season. Um, it is no doubt what Shohei Otani has been able to do both on the mound and at the plate. Um, it's been incredible to watch, but he continues to get it done, Gooby, the day after he throws, which is incredible. Now he had two hits last night. Yeah. He's got a 15-game <laughs> hitting streak. Oh, by the way, it's, I feel like we're losing sight of the hit streak based on everything he's doing on the mound. And, and you know, 11 home runs during that stretch after and every pitcher, you starting pitcher you've ever talked to, it's pitch a number of innings through a lot of pitches in a game. You're just happy to get out of bed and move the next day. He's dealing with 98-mile-an-hour fastballs, nasty secondary pitches, yet he's still putting up those numbers. It's just phenomenal to see. I, I love his smile on his face. And isn't it great every time he's at first base, immediately the first baseman yes. is having a conversation with him because, hey, you're, you're basically talking to Michael Jordan over there at first base with Shohei Otani. It's so phenomenal. He is having so much fun right now, and that's the thing. I think that's why that arbitration thing was done as quick as it was. 
because he is having fun right now. I, you know, it's funny you're talking about it from a pitcher standpoint, from a hitter standpoint. I'm counting down the days where I can crawl in a bed and not get out for a week because you're <laughs> exhausted as an everyday player. And here we're talking about a guy that, you know, he's 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 pulling you know both sides of that there. I mean, it, it's it's amazing what he can do the day after his start. Without a doubt, we talk about the legs. I mean, how important they are to pitch, but how important they are to hit. Yeah. And he's out there to do able to do that the sec the, the day after and go out there and you know put up numbers. That's just so impressive. And of course, run. I mean, you see him going first to third. You see him scoring from second, beating out a ground ball, it, breaking up a double play. He's done that all year long. And, and to go into September and just to see the hop in his step, I mean, he, he's he's a, he's a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> Alicorn. Get it right. He's got I mean, the wings. He's yes. got the fastest time on average going home to first. How do you do that? When you mentioned, how do you do that with your legs? Playing, he's hitting every day. Yeah. And he's also pitching at least once a week sometimes, depending on what day of the week it falls on his start. He you know, potentially two times a week, and yet he's still going down the first base like that. You mentioned go first to third and able to score on, on base hits and, and baseballs into the alleys. It's, it's phenomenal how strong and how strong his mind is too.